Xenia has made incredible progress in the last couple of months, and I already made a video on this topic. This will continue with a second part, where I add another 40 games to my playable list. For any game to qualify, it cannot have graphical bugs, audio skipping, or frequent crashes. Therefore, you can rest assured that my list will only include fully playable games. With that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start with Gears of War 2, which is now perfectly emulated on the Canary version of Xenia, as long as you implement the patch that fixes the shader. It should be remembered that only the first game was ever ported to PC, and while Microsoft is planning remasters in the future, this is currently the only way to play the original series on your computer. And yes, Gears of War 3 and Gears of War Judgment is also fully playable on the emulator. Yeah. Guess who's come back from the dead? Do I get a prize if I'm right? Chairman Prescott. No shit. Gears of War 3 is my personal favorite in the series and follows the story of Marcus Phoenix as he fights to save his father, who has secretly been held prisoner in a distant fortress. Later on he learns that there's a machine that can wipe out the locusts once and for all. It's probably the most emotional game in the entire franchise, and there's also a single-player DLC that plays off years before the first game, offering more backstory of past events. <laughs> Judgment is easily the most graphically impressive game of the original series, using modern post-processing effects like ambient occlusion to enhance the overall presentation. It's a prequel, predating the events of the first game, and focuses mostly on Baird and Cole. It underperformed commercially, probably because the 360 was coming to the end of its life cycle, but Judgment was a really good game and deserves a playthrough by fans of the series. Yes, that's Forza Horizon running at full speed on Xenia. Currently you need the Canary version to have the best experience, and I would advise that you disable motion blur in the patch file, otherwise you will get minor graphical anomalies. But otherwise, it's a perfect experience on the emulator. As for the game itself, it feels like a spiritual successor to the Test Drive Unlimited series, and no doubt Microsoft borrowed many mechanics from those games to make Horizon even more fun. Covenant just set off a nuke? No. The carrier is going to jump. It's a shot space rupture. You need them. EMP, looking for Analyze! They popped their chutes! We're going in hard! ODST stands for Orbital Drop Shock Troopers and plays off more or less during the events of Halo 2. It's a departure from the mainline series and divided fans upon release, but there's no denying that it's a unique experience. It's not as frenetic as Halo 3, and relies heavily on atmosphere in the beginning. Another positive for the game was its multiplayer modes, which were some of the best ever in Halo. ODST was released on PC as part of the Master Chief Collection in 2020. Why should I care about your brother's fate? Because you know the truth. Your secrets can save him. <laughs> <laughs> the Council will condemn war. Darksiders follows death as he aims to clear the name of his brother, who stands accused of wiping out humanity. Just like the first game, campaign maps are vast and contain open-world regions that can be explored freely on foot or by horse. The game relies heavily on Christian mythology and the Four Horsemen are literal representation from the Book of Revelations. Needless to say, the developers take many liberties with the characters, so it's best to just enjoy the story for what it is. Shadow Complex was a platform adventure metroidvania developed on Unreal Engine 3 and based on a series of Orson Scott Card spy novels. Yeah. 
The game was released exclusively for the 360, becoming one of the most popular staples on the Xbox Live Arcade service. In fact, it was one of the top 10 played titles for all of Xbox Live. It has since been remastered and released on PC and PS4. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose... Rapture. It's hard to believe that Bioshock is playable on Xenia, but I suppose the proof is in the pudding. The game probably has the best intro section of all time, and the way philosophy is weaved into the main story is astounding. It incorporates ideas of 20th century thinkers such as Ayn Rand, George Orwell, and Aldous Huxley, and let's not forget about the gameplay, which is only matched by other big titles like Crisis and Fear. It's likely you already own this on PC, since the entire Bioshock collection was given away on the Epic Store recently. But I still think it's awesome that an emulator can run it. We may as well talk about Bioshock 2, which is also fully playable. I dedicated a lot of time to testing both Bioshock games, and I couldn't find any bugs. Bioshock Infinite does have audio issues though, so I cannot include it in this list. But still, to have the first two games fully playable on Xenia is great for emulation. The main difference in number two is that you play as a big daddy from the start, otherwise it's mostly more of the same. Castle Fairfax looks so nice in the snow. Imagine the grand dining hall. I bet Lord Luthien's having roast duck this time of year. For the longest time, Microsoft ignored PC gamers to make exclusives for Xbox. Fable 2 was one of the games that skipped a Windows release, which is a pity since it's easily the best of the trilogy. It came closest to Peter Molyneux's vision of a dynamic, open-ended role-playing game. As for emulation, I would advise sticking to Xenia's Canary version for now. The master build is still underperforming, although this will probably change in the future. I'm right here! Fight! The 360 had a fair share of great fighting games, with Tekken and Virtua Fighter leading the charge. But Dead or Alive 5 felt like a generational leap when compared to its predecessors. It had far more realistic animations than ever before, and opponents were blessed with highly intelligent AI. All of this helped to make Dead or Alive one of the sleeper hits on consoles. This is definitely one to try if you like fighting games, and there is a Steam release in case you want to try multiplayer. I don't finish many games, but I found XCOM too irresistible to ignore. In fact, I bought it on Steam a few years ago, never regretting my purchase. And it works perfectly on Xenia, so if you have a physical copy lying around somewhere, go ahead and play it on the emulator. It's highly addictive and offers a lot of replayability. It does have ports for mobile devices, but they look generally poor in comparison. So rather stick to the consoles or PC. Fear was a breakout hit on PC, and was praised for its focus on combat and enhanced enemy AI. The point man had a supernatural ability to slow down time, and this helped him to level the playing field against multiple enemies. The Xbox version features an exclusive bonus level not found in the PC original, and there are also added weapons, called dual-wielded automatic handguns. Let me be clear though, Fear is never going to win awards for story or level design. 
It's all about the combat experience. It's on the other side of that barricade. Metal Gear Rising is a hack and slash action game, which was co-developed by Platinum Games and Kojima Productions. It's a spin-off from the Metal Gear series and plays off four years after Guns of the Patriots. The protagonist this time is Raiden, and he's become an advanced cyborg that uses a sophisticated cutting system to eviscerate enemies. It has a relative short campaign, but because of the unique gameplay experience, it's also one of the most replayed games on Steam. Three, two, one, go, go, go! Boost is a go. Hydro Thunder Hurricane is an awesome arcade racer and was a big success on Xbox Live Arcade. It's not a perfect experience on Xenia yet, crashing at least twice on my PC. But I'm willing to overlook this issue, since it's just so much fun. It's also one of the few games that refuse to run on Canary, so stick with the master build. Time to join up with the Crips and Raiders and Sanctuary! This glacier's full of nothing but murderers or jerkbags, like that hammerlock dude! I'm standing right here, dude. Now Good news! Borderlands 1 and 2 are now fully playable on Xenia's master build. I haven't tested the pre-sequel yet, so don't ask. As for the games, they are brimming with great humor and awesome combat. The second game was given away on Epic a year ago, so you may already own it on PC. But just like the Bioshock collection, it's fantastic to have Borderlands available on Xenia. You're not gonna be so effusive once the race starts, kid. You'll be the one blowing fuses when you try to catch me. Midnight Club LA features a combined total of 58 cars and three motorcycles. The open world map of Los Angeles is larger than all the three cities combined from Midnight Club 3. In many ways the gameplay is similar to GTA's racing sections, although it does have more depth. It's an impressive title for sure, and will push your hardware, so make sure you have a decent rig. If you have trouble running the game, Try emulating the remix version instead, which was released for the PlayStation Portable. Wicked old beast, ain't she? What? I said she's a wicked old beast. Me? Until recently, Silent Hill Downpour was unplayable on the emulator thanks to a crash at a certain point in the game. The issue seems to have been fixed, which is always welcome news. And like I said before, Downpour is one of the better Silent Hill games. It failed to sell on consoles because of bugs and performance issues, but the story and gameplay was always decent, and the puzzles were challenging enough to keep a player's attention. This one's a must-play for fans of survival horror. Fire. I've never met a person who doesn't like mini golf, and I'm a huge fan as well. It takes a lot of practice to get good at ultra mini golf adventures too, however. You'll find yourself getting triple bogeys at regular intervals. But it's so much fun, you won't mind. The game features over 50 mini golf holes for up to four players to complete. Let the battle begin! <laughs> Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution features a revamped fighting system. It includes new ways of forming teams based on their skills as well as counterattacks and guard breaks. The game includes a tournament mode where the player can battle against three CPU fighters at the same time in an all-out battle royale format. Players are also able to customize characters. This covers the first 20 games on this list. To save time, I won't narrate the last 20. If you find this video helpful, please give a like to help with the algorithm.